Good morning, everyone. Uh, hope uh, the drinks were not too much yesterday night. You guys are up on early, 10.30 is early. So um, I'm Anuj Tandon. I'm a co-founder, CEO of uh, Rolicule Games. We are a game development uh, company based out of uh, Pune, India. And uh, we're going to talk about how niche game development worked for us, what were the things that we did that were probably right or wrong, and how you guys can leverage from that. Uh, so l let me just talk about what niche is right now. So when you start off as an indie, th you're creating a game for yourself at the first. That's the first filter that you have when you create a game. It's, if it's not fun for you, it's probably not fun for the other person. So it's, it's, it's kind of, so every game in a way or a creative uh, medium is a niche in itself. So, so that's the first thing that, that we need to talk. But we are guided by segments, groups, and you know genres, your sports, casual, etc. So we need to pick a category and start on that. A little uh, about us, we are, oh, that's not come right. Anyways, so we are a game development and research studio. We were started in 2010. Uh, that that's looks much better in a Mac. Damn. Anyways, so uh, yeah, if you're 15 people company, we are growing to 20 very soon. We were started in 2010, and these are the these are uh, some of our games. So you will see the theme that we that we have picked. It's more towards sports and more specifically towards racket sports. So we were the first company that did a squash game on the App Store. Uh, we were the first company that did the badminton game, very popular in Asia, on the App Store, and then we moved on to tennis. So we've done three games so far. D it has different flavors uh, on the iPad. Some light version, some have light version, some have not. And uh, we've we have again chosen niche. We are one of the traditional guys who do not take the freemium path, but did, did the premium thing. So we priced our game not at 99 cents, but from 1.99 to 4.99 dollars, and so we made some money out of it, yeah. So like I said, it's sports games. Uh, when we started out, we did our own game engine in 2010 with it when we started. Uh, we didn't really know how would Unity work out. Uh, so might as well create our own engine <laughs> towards racket sports. If you think about it right now, if you ask the same question, would you do a, your own engine? I would think twice. But at that time, uh, it was a little uninformed. But yeah, you, you can choose whatever works for you. So yeah, we chose sports games, specifically racket sports. Uh, one of the reasons why, uh, why we chose uh, racket sports was uh, me and my founder, Rohit, uh, were big sports games fans, big FIFA fans, and NBA, NHL, right from, e we, we, I think we make the EA sports franchise work. Uh, we buy all the games. So uh, we wanted to be console developers when we uh, started out. It was, it was, uh, it was a sort of a traditional shift to mobile that would happen. And when we started out, we had non-existent brand, right? When you start off as an indie, you're struggling. You don't have a brand so that nobody takes you seriously as to what you're making. And especially when you're from India. I mean, the gaming, in, uh, the gaming market in India is non-existent. It's somewhat, uh, you know, in, we only consider the Asian gaming market. Uh, Japanese, Chinese, these are the countries that come to mind, and now Southeast Asia. Indian, nobody cares about the Indian gaming market. Even though you have a, more than a billion people there, nobody plays uh, games uh, or, I mean, the, the piracy and stuff, it's, it's just non-existent. And the kind of games that have come out or shipped out of India, there's not been a single game that has really done great in the overseas market. So that's, that's a problem when you're looking out for, when you're starting a company or you want to do indie game development, you look for mentors in, a, in, a, in, a, in your area. And we had none. And uh, when you start off with uh, two thousand dollars in savings, when you start off a company, that's that's not a lot of money to you can you know start something. So this was the situation where we were in. So what do you do? Screw everything. Buy a mic and an iPhone. Two thousand dollars. That's that's the good, good great way to go about it. Yeah. Just so that was the time when um, the the mobile scene had just started to come in. You know, you, the the costs have gone down to create a game or get a game out there, get some audience. So we began and we bought a mic and an iPhone, a desk that was literally our first office. So 
We did our uh, first game, uh, Tut Squash. Uh, it was uh, so squash is a is a is a rather lesser known sport. It's not played too well, but you know what happens is that that niche kind of get worked for us. Uh, it was our first game. We were heavily inspired by World Cup table tennis that had come out at that time. It was it was the the kind of uh, gameplay that the World Cup table tennis had was very cool, and it was more of a validation that what we could do something about it. Again, the image is supposed to be in the background on the Mac. It's not working on the PC. So, sorry for that. So, it was more of a validation what we want to do if we can create games. What we did out of, we got 100,000 downloads. We had a light version, so it's not the, all the paid downloads. So, it, it didn't, didn't really pay for us that well. But what we got was we got $5,000 from Dunlop Sport. And uh, these are the guys who make squash rackets. And they put their logo in the game. So that made us some money, you know, and it worked for us. So we, if you're starting out as a single man team, $5,000 is great, especially in the country in India where the cost advantages are fantastic. <laughs> uh, the next game, uh, we kind of bootstrapped here. Uh, what we did was we cre uh, when we did the squash game, we already created the technology for racket sports, and now we wanted to do next thing. When you choose a niche like squash, and then you want to go out, still our word was not out. Rollicule as a brand was not known. It's still not known, but you know, uh, in terms of the app media or the tech media, you need to spread your word because that's how they come to review your game. Either you're a great game or you create certain section of games. So. We, after squash, we decided we'll do a, a badminton game. But again, the funds that we didn't have because we needed a three. This time we wanted to go big. We wanted 3D characters. Uh, you know, it has to have a, a better gameplay and things like that. So what we did was we kind of bootstrapped. We we struck a deal with the uh, local education institutes that teach animation. We we taught there on the weekends and in place we got three machines where we got hired some interns to do uh, art for us. So that's that's how we bootstrap through the process. Again, if you see the controls in the screenshot, uh, it's, it's more of a console sort of, we put some virtual joysticks, buttons, use the accelerometer for directions. It's, it's more of a, uh, not we're making a purely mobile sports game. It's it's more of a console hangover that we had. Uh, but since we were the first company to create a badminton game, uh, we got fantastic media coverage. We we were featured on TechCrunch, TOAW, uh, Pocket Gamer, CNET. Everyone kind of covered us, so that was that worked great for us. And uh, we were featured on the App Store on the main new and noteworthy ad in 2010 when where one week of new and noteworthy made your life, you know. So that was a great, great time to be uh, in new and noteworthy. So we, in one week, we kind of made up money for the next one year. So, so that was that was a great time to be in. So being a different or being a, a little different from the mainstream kind of helped us grab attention. Where we, if we had tried to create another clone of another game, it would have been, you know, we would have been lost in the crowd. So Super Badminton has uh, more than uh, 1 million downloads, and around 20% of them are paid. So we we had um, um, around a, f a free uh, campaign run around it. So we got 800,000 downloads based on that. Uh, the next game that we uh, created was a tennis game. But we didn't want it to create just another tennis game. So we added a story to the sports game which was pretty new uh, in the in the in the market so we had a comic book within the game which has a story of a of a uh, central tennis character who's, uh, who's a tennis prodigy he goes through university etc and and we kind of got down to the basic of the controls of how a mobile game should be so we got introduced swipe or flick based controls that really uh, uh, helped us capture the casual audience uh, we released it. It got fantastic reviews. Again, we were featured by Apple uh, because it was a little different of, uh, of what the sports implementation were there. And 1.1 uh, million downloads. So the Flick Tennis for Android is coming out in June 2013 free. So if you guys have Android, especially in Asia, you should check that out. Yeah, so we were one of the first few companies in India to uh, get an international mobile gaming award because of creating in our original IP and being different or uh, you know, doing something very niche. Again, we, are, we did 
do price our games at premium and so out of the 2.3 million downloads we have around 10 percent to 15 percent are paid downloads so and so that that is good if you're a team of say 10 people based out of in asia where the costs are a little low to run the to run the company uh we were also voted as the top 10 emerging product companies of india so a little talk about how this uh, scene of getting funded externally in in south asia is all about it's it's not a pretty picture nobody invests in gaming nobody invests in startups let alone gaming it's 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 a it's a very different people will either put money in property or something like that so they they will not put money into startups it's just not in their culture so it's changing now the ecosystem is evolving but uh, it's it's not a, a good place to be if you want to raise a lot of money for gaming but you know being niche or being different is sells well so with some investors uh, so when you when you approach a vc uh, what they are looking for is how would they make money off you uh, so if you want to sell to say uh, EA Sports, then being a sports game company is is uh, a good thing, right? So you can pitch to the investors that you know, hey, uh, I'll be the best at racket sports. Uh, probably someday EA Sports will come looking for a racket sports franchise when it grows big in Asia. So they might acquire us. So it it, it gets the attention of uh, certain investors. So. That was the past that what we have done, and now we are kind of focusing on uh, what we want to do uh, today and what we are doing tomorrow. It's it's really interesting. Uh, we call it roller motion. Uh, this uh, this image should uh, tell you. So what we have done is we've uh, built a tech uh, that uh, converts your uh, smartphone or your iPhone uh, into a sort of a motion gaming contr uh, controller and you can play games on your TV, right? And that's using Apple TV at the moment for the iOS. I'll just show you a video that should give you an idea as to what, what I'm talking about. More and more people are moving away from television when it comes to playing games. And today, the focus has shifted towards mobile. But to play games on television that utilize motion gaming, people today still need to buy expensive and dedicated game consoles accompanied by special sensor hardware. We have been trying to figure out how can we get the best of both worlds. Roller Motion is a technology that utilizes the gyroscope, magnetometer, and accelerometer in the iPhone to precisely track its various movements, and allows users to play games using natural motion gestures on television. It makes the iPhone a complete portable living room console using Apple TV. On mobile phones, tilt, tap, and swipe is something we have become fond of and gamers have become comfortable with. It has many important elements, but has also come to dictate a lot of what goes into games. All games are made to fit one standard. Creativity is being restrained and the range of games is narrowing. Introducing new ways of playing games will broaden game design and experiences and loosen creative constraints on game developers. Rollercule Games is an award-winning game development and research studio who have always introduced unique games with very intuitive gameplay on the That's Apple App Store. The question that we have asked ourselves right from the beginning, can we make even moms play tennis or badminton or even Infinity Blade on iPhone and create a complete home entertainment system? We love television and want to continue to play more games on it without a need to buy another gaming console and without giving up my iPhone. Moreover, setting up consoles is a tedious process and if you want to play your favorite games at your friend's place, you also need to carry all your games with you. With Rollo Motion, you just connect your phone and television wirelessly using Apple TV and tap the game on your phone to start playing. That's it. Instead of just playing on your phone, you can now play with the phone. The game is always on your iPhone and you can play on any Apple TV, anywhere. There have been many attempts in the past to achieve motion gaming on the iPhone, but they usually require highly complex setup, run on either laptops or desktops, or run only on PC. Also, they're not very precise, as the majority use just the iPhone's accelerometer. 
When you play tennis using rollo motion, you can play ground strokes, slice, and lob shots, and simultaneously give accurate direction to the ball, just by naturally swinging the phone like a tennis racket, without even touching the screen. Our technology makes everything so natural and precise by utilizing the gyroscope, magnetometer, and accelerometer all at once. We have a prototype, and it works. You can play tennis, badminton, or even kill zombies. This is a big undertaking. We are trying to do something incredible in a huge app store market, and it may not happen without effective support. We love Apple TV and strongly believe that it has the potential to disrupt an established industry and emerge as a living room console. So the Apple TV part was actually for Apple. We do love them, but uh, it was more pitched uh, to get their attention. Uh, so, and we got it. Uh, I mean, we were in March invited to Cupertino, the headquarters. We're working with the Apple TV team very closely to get the game out soon. So I think in a couple of weeks, the game should be out. Uh, again, uh, it's, it's a very small market if you, if you talk about the total addressable. There are just 12 million Apple TVs sold worldwide, right? And uh, if you look at the compatible device, the iPhone 4S, 5, and the iPod Touch that support AirPlay mirroring, it, the total addressable market comes down to around 6 million. It's, it's a very small market that we are playing in as compared to millions of iOS devices that are out there. Uh, it might be a small market today, but what we are betting on is that that it might be a small market today, but tomorrow it might be become huge. Not only for the fact that Apple TV uh, as a product would evolve, uh, this technology is portable to Android. And if you know, Android 4.2 supports Miracast. And if you see all the TVs that are coming out, LG, Sony's, and the Samsung's, they all have Miracast enabled. So the, the idea that we're saying that there's a lot of convergence of mobile gaming and TV happening, and uh, what we're trying to do is bring the motion gaming that you guys enjoyed with the dedicated consoles earlier. You, you don't need to buy them. Basically, we're not telling you to uh, choose between A and B. It's just everyone has phones, and uh, you have TVs, so you can enjoy gaming on the same. So yeah, it's going for a small market right now. Might get big returns in the future. That's where we have made our bets. Again, chosen, chosen a niche. That's for me. Thank you. And the alignment is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for your presentation.